Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome to Game Day, here to Heavy Cardboard. Teach, play, discuss various games. Today, solo stream of Pharon. Uh, originally published, uh, I believe, Pegasus Spiel, Frosted Games, Catch-Up Games, all of them had a uh, had a hand in this over the, since 2019 when this originally came out. Now, we this flew completely under the radar, and I was completely oblivious, I'll be honest, to this game until Dan brought it to game day one day. And it kept showing up, and people kept playing it. And I actually learned this game, or taught this game, three or four times before I actually ever played it. And we did a live stream of it last night, four-player game that I think went really, really well. And so I was like, you know what? We got the game on the table. Let's bust out a solo playthrough that I was sick for last week. Got my COVID booster. Woo, that thing kicked my butt. Anyway, so today we're going to bust out a solo stream of this. And while I've never played it solo, mechanically it's not too difficult. It's pretty similar to a two-player version of this game uh, with uh, with going up against an AI, essentially. And I'll be honest, going through it seems really cool and going to be hard. So I'm looking forward to this. So let's get to it, shall we? Uh, I'm going to do an overview of this bad boy. I'm not going to do a full teach because, honestly, I just did this last night. But that said, I will give you an overview if you weren't here for last night's stream. All right. Um, yeah, and also I want to give big thanks to Alyssa, who was kind enough to give, uh, I'm sorry, to Dan, who was kind enough to give me his copy of Farron. He doesn't realize it. He thought he just loaned me his copy. Um, but after going through the solo of this, um, thank you, Dan. He doesn't watch these, so he'll never know until he shows up at game day. All right. So that said, uh, let's get to it, shall we? Uh, all right. So we have the action board out here. There are five different actions out there, and we're going to choose the actions based on where we place resources out here on that uh, on the wheel, if you will. Then we have the trader. So apparently it's a trader aspect where we're trying to uh, rule and the trader is trying to usurp us. So here we have the trader stuff. We have the pyramid of time, which is for turn order, I'm sorry, for passing order and to track the number of rounds. All right. So, what is what are we trying to do here? Well, we're trying to we're trying to score the most points. Now, it is a us versus them. So, the trader will score some number of points. We will score some number of points and whoever has the most points wins. So, place your bets there. The trader will be green, aka uh, um, Jess I, I tend to go up against her color, and she usually whoops my butt, so keep that in mind as we go along. Uh, so how do you play this game? On whoever is the first player, whether it's us or whether it's the traitor, uh, we'll have the, uh, the crown, the scarab, that, the first player marker. Uh, on your turn, two options. You either take an action out here with the associated area, or you pass. Uh, when you pass, going to take one of the two, uh, oh God, now I can't, uh, I can't think of the word. Anyway, you take one of the two jars of intestines and get the resources for it. Briefly, I will go over what the various actions are. So this will spin every round. So the colors associated with it are not, they are there for the round, but not for subsequent rounds. We'll start in this area. They're obviously in a solo or two-player game. Uh, this, these spots are not available, so we only have three spots available on a given turn. All right, so here we go. First things first, over here in the offerings area, place a black resource, easy enough. If you do, you can take one of the, two, the set of two pentagonal uh, tokens. Now, these technically should be in there, but I've noticed streaming is a little difficult to see. So we're going to go ahead and just move them up there. Take one set. If they are colored, so yellow, black, green, etc., they work just like a regular uh, square resource. There are five basic colors and silver, which is wild. If they are one of these that have an icon that are associated with the various uh, areas, then it counts as a wild resource for that area. All right, so we have this one, which is the burial chamber, which is here. And then we have the noble, which is up there for the nobles there. 
But anyway, place one resource that matches the color here, take one set. If you wish to place a second resource of the matching color, in this case it must be black, you may take any one of the available that are there. And again, it's a two-player game, so this side is not used. Easy enough on that. Uh, let's just go ahead and go clockwise from there. The burial chamber right here, pretty simple. Uh, place a red, and then if the color here can be used for the actual action, it counts as having paid for it. So normally, you would need to pay an additional red and yellow. So if this were something along the lines of like that, play, pay a black, then would need to pay a red and a yellow to be, you know, discarded to be able to advance to that step. As it is, you paid a red, the red counts as that red, so you actually only have to pay a red here, discard a yellow, and advance to that, and these are end game points at the end of the game. This represents any one uh, basic resource color, again, silver being wild, end game points. Pretty straightforward on that one. Let's go ahead and keep it rolling. The nobles here, place a green here in one of every color. Again, if you paid the green, you wouldn't have to pay the green again, easy enough. When you do so, you take this. This is going to be worth some number of in-game points at the end of the game. Then it's going to have either an immediate one-time use uh, bonus on it, the lightning bolt, or nothing. If it has a gear, that means a once per turn, tap it and that's that. And if it has a infinity symbol, it's just an ongoing icon. So easy enough. These refill immediately when they're taken there. Moving over to the Nile area. Place a blue, and then if you wish to not pay extra resources, pay a green or a red, then get those resources. So a black and a silver, which again is a wild, or a green and a yellow. Go ducks. And then either advance any one track or advance twice on blue or or red track, or twice on one, easy enough. These would be worth some points at the end of the game if you've reached that level on the given track. Easy enough there. Moving over to the artisan area. Pay a yellow, and then two additional of that color. So it's yellow, so you gotta pay three yellow, or yellow and two silver. If it's the blue here, you gotta pay three blue. You get the idea. Then it's worth some number of victory points at the end of the game. Then uh, get immediately get whatever the re uh, resources are. Um, copped it? No, uh, canopic. Canopic jars, that's what they are. There you go. So a canopic jar, uh, random off the deck, which is always going to be three random resources and then a silver there. Easy enough, that. So that is all of those there, all right? All the actions. So when our turn, we'll have some number of resources to begin the game, we'll have a noble to start the game, and then we take actions until we choose to pass. If we pass, we move up here. If the AI passes, or if we pass, and then they take another action, instead of us taking a normal action, because we have passed, then in that case, we'll advance one step to the right, and then get whatever that is. So one basic resource, take a silver. If it goes here, it is any one from the offerings there, or you can always draw mystery meat from there. And I should also point out artisans and nobles, you can take mystery meat or draw off the top of the deck. Now, not only can you choose that, but you can choose any one of these to the left of it. You continue until the other player uh, passes. When that player passes, in a multiplayer game, the next player would go up to that, the next player would go up to that, but obviously in a solo or two player, as it were, uh, that is moot. Then you take a canopic jar from there, and then reseed the board, rinse and repeat, do that five times, then go into final scoring. Final scoring looks a lot like this stuff. We'll get into that in a bit. Mostly, it's going to be all your tiles. Any piece of cardboard that's left in front of you is worth a point. Uh, whoever's the first player, that's worth three points. Uh, anybody that has the Pharaoh mask, which is have two nobles and have reached the third step on the Burial Chamber will take this and they will score seven points at the end of the game. So honestly, we'll just go ahead and throw that bad boy up there. You'll score those, you'll score those, and score these and some other points. At the end of the game also, there are the uh, gods. To be able to score a god, you must have both the left side of that god and the right side of that god. So for this one, is that Nubis? 
I don't know. Anyways, here, you must have three artisan cards in your tableau and have three pentagonal uh, icon or uh, chits still in front of you. If you do, that's worth 10 points at the end of the game. If you would like to score both of these gods, in this case, you would need five of the pentagonal uh, tokens in front of you because they do not stack. So in other words, you would need, you, once you score here, you cannot score for there and the same is the same for all of those. All right, cool. Done. That's it. Now, how does the AI work? Pretty simple. There are five of these tiles here, all right, and they were randomly uh, put out here in this order. Now, in the, uh, there is a scaling for difficulty. The easy side is the lighter side here, and I thought, hey, it's heavy cardboard. I scored pretty well last night. I think I might be able to do approximately the middle version. So I turned three of these at random uh, to their more difficult side, and here we are. Then you randomly select one token or of each color and put them out here to represent, this is the red track, this is the black track, this is the yellow track, so on and so forth. Uh, easy enough there. Then, if you'll notice, and at this point, I think we'll just go ahead and leave this there. If you notice, there are canopic jars down here in the bottom. In the first round, second round, third round, fourth round, fifth round, that is how many turns that the AI is going to take. And that is why five, we have five over in the AI's area, we have five of their jars. What are the various actions? I'll be honest, I've only gone through some of them. We'll go through them together there in the rule book. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, thanks to Catch Up Games for posting the English version of this game in chat. Or I'm sorry, in, uh, in the files on BGG. So we will go through these. But uh, with that said, uh, we need to go through setup Place your bets, AI versus us. This will be the AI's area right here. This will be our area there. And by our, I'm just assuming that y'all will be on my side. Oh, also, um, it is a stupendously gorgeous day outside. So I have the blinds open, I have the windows open. So if y'all hear any weird sounds today, it's because I'm doing something I never do, which is have the windows open in the studio. So if there's anybody walking by there, they're going to hear some dude just talking to himself going through this game. That's not weird at all, right? And we have a little iced tea because, again, it's a gorgeous day out. Yes! Peter S., are these randomized? They are. I changed it up from last night. So they're little pieces here. So, like, this is one piece. This, And I just randomized it out there. Okay, so easy enough there. Um, okay, actually, I lied. I said I was going to leave that there. I am not. We, did I, a moment, hit a wrong button. There we go. All right, so, whoa. Okay, that's better. So I randomly dealt out two nobles. We get to choose from these. I have not looked at these yet, so here we go. In-game uh, scoring for this, not a lot. This one, four points, and then four points for each god that we score in the Nile area. So potentially that's worth a total of 12 points, and the Nile area being here. So this says need to have uh, all five, at least on level one. Um, yeah, so easy enough. That's actually going to be a really easy 12 points. However, this one, as a immediate, I get an artisan of my choice, and then uh, I get a silver. So that's great to boost us at the beginning, because that's extra resources. That's tempting, but we're forgoing 12 points. Tempting. Um, this one says uh, green and black can be used interchangeably. Also useful. Uh, whichever one we don't choose, the AI is going to get as their base noble on this as well. So that's something to keep in mind. And in addition to that, here are the two random canopic jars that we get to choose as well. Uh, the AI does not get to choose one, but whichever one we don't choose, whatever the uh, colors are, we're going to actually block off those spaces. Um, I'm leaning towards taking this one to begin with. So I think I take two black, and a green there. So I took this, this gets discarded. Then green, green, blue was not chosen. So 
blue, there, green, green. So there's only one available action there, two available actions there. I thought this was going to be useful, so I chose not to do that one. So that is that. We will put out two new canopic jars for the next round. Yeah, fix that a little bit. There we go. Okay, there. Uh, Peter says, take the right one. Okay, I'm fine with that. So we got that. That means the AI gets this one. We're gonna actually, this deck, y'all don't really need to have that on camera and that buys us a little extra real estate. He gets an artisan and I believe that is random off the deck, but let's see, number 23. Oh, it's one of four uh, or top deck and you earn a silver. Now, AI is not super clear, or the rule book's not super clear on that. So there's the silver, and we're just going to top deck it. Now, he does not get anything that is shown over here. This is simply for end game scoring for him. So we'll go ahead and put the artisans there. That is him. Uh, we need to randomize turn order now. Uh, so whoever's first. We are first. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. I think that is it. Let me double check for setup. I think that is everything. I believe so. All right. So we have two blacks and a green. Um, I think getting more resources to start seems like a good idea, so we'll place a black up there. Uh, I think we go ahead and take those seem okay. And then we could pay the other black to get, say, the blue, and I think I will. So I will pay the black and I will get that blue one there. Now, in the setup, it does say that the extra uh, offerings, the three must be in a uh, row top to bottom. So that's why those are in that specific uh, specific order there. I think that's that feels all right for our first turn. So that's it. That's our first action. Okay. Now the AI goes or the trader. So here's how this works. We're going to draw the top one of these and I'll go ahead and put it here to show y'all. First things first, let me make sure that I get this right. Trader tile, uh, the resource indicated on the bottom of the jar. Okay, so the bottom of the jar is a blue. So that means we're going to go ahead and place a blue on there and we immediately carry that out. What that is, is this says, discard the artisan with the highest or lowest, you know, if it's a uh, plus or a minus, as it were, there. So discard, in our case, uh, the artisan with the highest prestige value among the four available. It's not taken by the trader and does not count for their score at the end of the game. In case of a tie, the trader discards the leftmost relevant artisan. All right, so here, this is the highest point value. Well, you can see these, that is going to be the eight gets discarded, so I'll just go ahead and make a pile over there. That immediately refills, done. And then this one here says discard the available noble corresponding to the number starting from the left. It's not taken, doesn't count for them. So that is number three from the left. So left being, you know, as it's facing, right? So one, two, three, that one gets discarded. Again, I will just keep a little discard pile over there. That immediately refills. Okay. So now we have taken care of the bottom one here. Now the top ones, we get to make a choice on this one. All right. So this is, we either, or let me, let me, let me rephrase that. The black or the green will go, the blue green will go here or the black will go here. The opposite will go out on the wheel. Okay. Um, 
So if you place it out there on the wheel, nothing happens. It's just blocking off a spot. It's whenever you place the tile out here. And I, I think it's obvious, but I, I suppose I should say, you go from the bottom to the top, okay? Um, yeah, uh, let me go ahead and give a little bit of an overview for a couple of the things that I think are going to be important. For the various gods here, the scoring is if they reach those for them. And then the prestige cards. So note that this one says zero points. However, if this never goes up, it's going each one of their nobles is going to be worth six points, seven, eight, nine, ten, or twelve, respectively, everyone regardless of what it says on it. Okay? So keep that in mind. So we could place a green here, and if we do, that's going to block off a black spot there, but it's also going to ensure that each of these is worth seven points. Okay. Or we could place a black here, and the black there says, the trader takes uh, the set corresponding to the indicated number starting from the top. So in our case, that would be one, two, three. Makes sense. Okay. Trader lays all the offering tiles that they take in front of them. There are no tokens left in the spot designated. They take nothing. So, unfortunately, uh, that wasn't a one on that because that'd be great. But they are going to take a set. Um, and that blacks off the green. I'm not going to probably go to the green spot this round. Ah, which do we choose? That's actually a really, really, uh, really tough decision. I think, so we have a black and a green. I think, I mean, we're going to get some out here anyways. So let's go black there. Let's go green, or I'm sorry, green here, which that means that's worth seven points. It was going to be at some point anyways, and it blocks off a spot there. I think that's better than him taking those and keeping the, me from getting those. Now, I realize I'm only going to get one of those sets, but it prevents him, I think. No, I'm wrong. Now I feel like Rado. Hi, Richard. So he will take that one. Those go in front of him. Done. That's his turn. Now, you might be asking yourself, self, when does the AI pass? When all of their com uh, canopic jars are gone for that round. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Our turn. All right. Um... I'm tempted to go to the yellow spot here. Yellow, silver, silver, and take that one because that'll get us one of the silver back and then three other resources and a couple of points at the end of the game. I mean, like, that that feels not terrible. I If y'all want... Oh, by the way, this gets discarded. So, there. But I'll just do this so we know that they've taken turns. Um... If y'all watched last night, I do like me having a resource engine in this. I don't have the red, but I do have the yellow to at least start working up on that. Green, black by going here. Hmm. Neither of those colors are terribly interesting. I think I am gonna. So I will go there, spend the two silver, and I'll stay on target. So I will go ahead and grab that. We will refill there. I will get a silver back and the top of the canopic jars, which that is yellow, yellow, red. Okay. That's me. Okay. AI goes, black goes on theirs. 
and they take the third set. Nothing we could do about that. And now black or yellow. And I think I did mention, oh, maybe I did not. Uh, if there's no place for any of the two resources on the wheel, um, if the three spots of a color are already occupied, you're not allowed to choose that resource, so you would have to choose the other color. So what I mean by that is, let's say black was full, yellow's not, I would have to choose that the yellow goes out here. I wouldn't have a choice in that case. But if there's no place for either of the two top ones, uh, then most bus must be placed on those, and uh, beginning with the leftmost, and you trigger them. So, yeah. So there's that. All right, so black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow. The black one is here. The trader uh, takes the offering token corresponding indicated number from uh, starting from top, keeps them in front of them. If there's no token left on the spot designated, they take nothing. So to be clear, one, I took the second, three, so that third one is available still. Okay. And the yellow is, go ahead and discard the number two noble. Eh. So if I place the yellow and then block off, and then they would get that. If I did it the other way, place the black here and the yellow out there. That doesn't seem terrible. I think I'll... I think I'll go that way, I think. There's gonna be a lot of mistakes made on this. So they're going to take this for that, and then the yellow will go out here and make a mess. There. I feel like he's being way more productive than we are. Okay. Um, Again, I like my resources. Doing that might not be terrible. Blue green isn't too bad up there, but I'm not worried about him closing that off, whereas he could close off the yellow, so I think we will do that. So I will go yellow there, discard a yellow, discard a silver, and I will take that one that one is yellow green, blue red. There we go. Okay. It's not terrible. Cool. Y'all following along? All this making sense? All right. So green goes onto his board. There it is. Seven points for him. Boo. Red green. Now, if we were to place the green out there. Uh, they take the artisan with the highest prestige value and add it, okay? Or the red is, the trader moves one space up uh, one of the tracks in the Nile area, choosing uh, the one corresponding to the color of their most full trader tile. In case of a tie, left most relevant tile. So in this case, it, it move up the black track. Oh, but, but I cannot choose to put the green out there because green is full. So red's got to go out there, so that must go there, okay? So, because that is full, so he's going to take the high, I uh, forgot to refill that. The highest value is there. I feel like I am going to get smoked today, by the way. Okay, so he did that. The red goes out. He done. Okay. Red, yellow for here, or some blue action over on the tracks. Uh, let's go ahead and start moving. 
here. I have the resources, so I think so. So there's a red and a yellow. Work our way up there. That's us. Boom, done. All right. Okay, yellow. That is number two. Noble discarded. Okay, we're gonna move those. I don't feel like stretching that far. There we go. Okay, and then we have red black, huh? Uh, both can go out there. Red says they move up, right, a black there. Or this is they take the artisan with the lowest prestige value. I don't want them to keep doing that. So I think we will go red there. And they will put a black out there. So they have to go out whatever has the most tiles. So that's going to be black. Let me make sure I read that right. Choosing one of the color most full trader tile. Yep, so that'll be black. They're going to move up one step there. That seems okay. That's not terrible. They have one more turn this round. Our turn, we're not done. Uh, let's go ahead and start working on the Nile here. So we'll go blue for sure. And then looking at the Nile stuff. So without having to spend extra resources, uh, so either the green or the red, I think we go green. We got a couple of them, so we'll spend the green. That means we go up any one track. We get a black and a silver and any one track. And I think we agreed last night that green seems to be the least likely. So we'll go up the green track there. That's us. Done. Welcome, Dusty. All right. So, AI's turn. The trader puts another on black. They take the lowest point value artisan. That is that one. And then green and yellow, both of which are full. You'll notice, okay? So if they're full, I believe I said that uh, both of them have to go onto, oh, did I hit the wrong button? I did, sorry. Uh, yep, both go on the trader tiles. That sucks. Let's not, uh, let's not keep that going. They take the lowest artisan and the number two, I believe, is gone, right? That is offering corresponding indicated number top to bottom. Yes, that is gone. So there's only the top one, so they don't take anything on that. Ignore that, so that's good. And then, uh, what did I say? The lowest artisan number, I forgot to refill. Lowest is three, and in Thai takes the leftmost. They're going on a heavy artisan uh, strategy. Okay. Our turn. Oh, that's right. Black and green, got to remember, are interchangeable for us. Yeah, I think we will go blue, discard the red. That is going to go up one on the blue track, up one on the red track, per that, and a yellow and green. That's us. The AI now goes and passes. Done. Normally, when you pass, you get a canopic jar. When the AI passes, it does not. Um, let me make sure. They pass, they don't take a jar. However, they place their token on the first line, right? And progress on it if you continue playing turns. And then they earn a resource of their choice, random. Um, and they get points for that at the end of the game. 
and then that's that. Okay, easy enough. So he's just going to keep going like that. Okay. So let's see. Black doesn't make sense because, hmm, yellow's full, blue's full, green's full. I could go red again, so red, blue, green. Well, I can't because I don't have enough. Oh, I guess we're passing. Okay, because we literally can't take any action. So boom, we're done, we're passing. When we pass, we choose one of those and then again, uh, let's see, when we pass, we will refill this, we will empty that, and then we will put more on based on whatever one's left. All that makes sense? Okay. So here, let's go ahead and clear these so I don't forget to do that real quick. All right, so that is done, and the wheel will rotate one space, or one, you get it. There is a cool handy dandy little spot to do so. What one do we want now that we see everything? Um, so they're both blue-black, so there is a blue-black for sure. And then do we want a yellow or a red? I don't have the red. I think I might want to go over there for a red, so I'll take that one. So that's me. Then here, blue, black, red. So blue, black, red. That gets discarded. All right, so then we refill these from the bag. And if we ever run out, we take the ones that were discarded and, and fill. So we'll go, okay, fine. That dropped out first there. These are not the ones I want. There, there, and then two more for the center offering, bonus offering. Oh, well, okay. They really were shuffled, I promise. They're in this bag. Okay. Uh, by the way, the AI passed first, so they get that. So we are going into round two. Is there anything else? We need to put out two new can, uh, canopic jars of intestines. And then uh, we're in round three here. I'm sorry, round two. So they get three canopic jars for their turn. So we'll just put them right there. How's that? That'll work. Okay. So, their turn. There we go. All right. All right, so they get a yellow, which the number three noble will go away, which is that one. Refill. Okay. And now blue and green. Whew. All right. What do we got? So, blue is artisans, green is the Nile area. I'm leaning towards putting blue out there, but that means those are, uh, right now it's only one of them. That's not so bad. So I think I'm okay with that, right? Yeah. So we'll go a green there. So it's worth eight points now, but okay. I say that right now, but there's that in blue. So it's our turn. Don't have three blue. Black and green are interchangeable. I need to remember that. Hmm. One, two, three, four. So what does that look like if I were to... That's all five to be able to get one of those nobles over there. Um, the nobles that are available 
Uh, so the, those are only worth two points, and they have an immediate one-time thing, which is advance one step on the uh, pyramid uh, burial chamber, which is this one right here, and get a silver. That one is advanced three steps on any tracks on the Nile, and two silver. The one in the middle, pretty straightforward, is uh, potentially 12 points up top, and then blue and green are interchangeable. That seems not terrible, but none of those are like terribly exciting, honestly. <sighs> hmm. You know what? I think we start here. We'll go with the yellow and I'm gonna take the extra two resources there. So let me organize these back up again. Okay. Yeah, I think that feels all right. Okay, so that one is gone. Those can go away. He's only taking three turns this turn. That's good. Green goes... A plus minus, let me look at this one. This one says, uh, move up one space on the now choosing the corresponding, right, most full and choosing least full. If tied, left most relevant tile. Okay. So, okay, so the highest, which is going to go up the green track and the lowest red or blue, so it looks like blue, or I'm sorry, red, because leftmost. So green and red will happen. Green up the green track. And I said red as well. Okay, done. Red and blue, if I put blue out, that means that's closed off for the round. If I put red, out that's okay and then blue yeah i think we go i think we do that so gonna put the red out so the blue will go there so he advances one step on the burial chamber i'm okay with one step that's fine and the red will go there that doesn't seem too bad okay black and green are interchangeable I don't have a yellow. That's the problem. I would like some yellow. I don't really see a way of getting any yellow. Uh, maybe over there. I could use the silver as a yellow on the Nile area. That seems not bad. Yeah, I think so. So I will go a green there and I'll pay the silver for the yellow for a canopic jar and then I can go one there and I'll go one on green as well. And the canopic jar is a random. Perfect. Or at least we got one yellow. So black and a blue. Okay. And his last turn now for this round, red goes. So now apparently somebody is like doing some yard work. I'm curious, how, how loud is that to y'all? Cause again, I, I warned you that I left the windows open cause it's gorgeous outside. That is highest track, lowest track. Highest track in this case is going to be green. And again, red, yeah. They're mowing. Thank you for that. Green and red. There. And there. Okay. Okay. So there's that. And then green and blue. Oh, blue would close off there. 
green there. I think I prefer to put the green out. What does blue get him? All right, we're gonna let it lie. I'm not gonna bother shutting the windows then. Thanks, y'all. Um, so if I were to put the blue out here, that's not so bad. A blue green or blue black as it were would get me a black and a silver and up one track. I kind of want to move up two tracks though and get the canopic jar. I do have a yellow. There's a good chance I will get another yellow. So if I were to put the blue out, it blocks me off there. That gets me, I don't want to do that. I want to leave the option for the blue. So in a perfect world, I would like to put the blue here. The blue here says we would get rid of two of the, I'm actually okay with that. Yeah, so we'll put the blue here. And the green goes out on the board. Okay, so the blue says get rid of the highest point number. So that is that one. Done. And then number one, which is that one. I don't mind getting rid of that one. What do we have over there? Uh, blue and yellow are interchangeable and four points and another four for those, possibly. Eh, none of those are super great, but all right. But the good news is he's dumping around at least. So there's that. Well, we're definitely going to go here again. So I will go green and yellow, which I will go one more step there, one more step there, and then get another canopic jar. That is, there we go. Yellow, green, and red. Okay, in a perfect world that would have been a blue, but I digress. Okay, now he passes. Nothing else happens, okay. I really still want a blue and don't have silver. I could, one, two, three, you know what? Green, black. Those are the five colors over there. That would get me two silver, or do we take mystery meat? I think we go there, and again, uh, green and black are interchangeable, so one of those is green, so there's that. <sighs> Sacrificing 10 points, but I'm gaining, yeah, I think I will take this, because I want the wilds on that. So I will take that. That's going to be two silver. Not saying I'm making the right decisions, but we'll see. And then up three bumps. I think the bump, let's see, red's coming up. So red, blue, and black, I will save. So that is one, two, three bumps on that. There we go. I'm okay with that. So now he advances, he gets a resource of any color. Doesn't matter. So just at random, okay. Okay. Is it worth Spending both those silvers to go there. Oh, we need to refill. Zero interest in the one that just came out. It's 10 points, and then uh, 
I can interchange here, but I'm honestly almost done over there, so I really don't need to mess with that. So the question is, do we go here or do we go there and spend the extra resource? So if we went there, that would be black, green, and blue. There. Then we could go black and red. And by doing so, we would gain the mask. And that still leaves us those. That's two turns. I think that's okay. Because the yellow that's coming up isn't going to match those anyway. So yeah, let's go ahead and waste a resource, so to speak. So there, blue-green. Advance there. He then gets a silver. Okay. Then we will go black and red. Advance there. We now have two nobles and we're on the boat, so we take the pharaoh mask. There. Done. And then he advances here. And it literally doesn't matter what he would take, right? So let me look on this. Randomly take one from the bag. Okay. So, he gets one from the bag here. Okay. And now, we have these resources left, but we really don't have a whole lot going on. I could, theoretically... I mean, that's four points we could take for a silver. I think the silver is probably more beneficial right now as silver than doing that. So I think we're going to pass. So when we pass, we choose one of these. Uh, so it's going to be a black and a green. We know that. And do we want red or yellow? I think we want the yellow. So we will take that one. Those will get filled out here, but let's go and clear these off. Okay. So these will go out there now, black, red, and green. It rotates one. We need to refill the offerings. Not a whole lot going on there. That goes away. We need two more out. And this round, who? Six. Two, three, four, five, six. He's making some hay this round. Okay. There are five left in the deck before we have to shuffle those in. Is there anything else I forgot? Two new. Good. Done. Done. Nope. That's it. Okay. Cool. Uh, he passed first, so he stays the first player. So here he goes. I guess they, technically, but. All right, they get a blue. Advance one on the burial track, okay. There, and then red, yellow. Red and yellow. I don't see myself using the burial track much, so if we could put that on. More art is in. No, that's Artisan. Sorry, this is... Moves up one space. Yeah, I'm good with that. So we'll put the red there. I'll put the yellow on the on the burial. Um, what do you call it? The uh, burial chamber. So that is the lowest one, again, to the left, which will be red. 
he's capped out there. And what happens if he is full out? If the trader already reached the highest level on the track, ignore the effect. So actually, that's not so bad. Okay, that's annoying me. I am going to, a moment. All right, the blinds are still open, but at least it's muted now. All right, so that is his first turn. There. And for us, what are we trying to do here? I mean, we could bust out the Nile track a little bit. I don't have any blue. I do have black. And getting the wilds and the red. Yeah, that seems not terrible. Do I want that as a wild for that and a green, which is also a black? Less exciting, so I think we go again. We'll go up there. So that is a red. We'll spend a black, which is a green in our case, which is that track up two on the red and black track. So we'll go one, two, and two silver. Okay, we're done. The green track. Well, the good news is he only has one noble card so far. So far. But they're worth not it's worth nine points. That's okay. So far. And then red and yellow. I think I would prefer to put the yellow out there on the burial track. But if so, well, that would give him another noble or we give him another artisan. And that artisan's worth eight points. So do we go noble or artisan? It's a difference of one point right now. But more importantly, the Nile track blocks off. And I think we would only advance one on the burial track. I, I think we still do this. Maybe this is a dumb decision, but he takes the leftmost and the yellow will go there. The leftmost, I'm okay with getting rid of that. Again, nothing matters on these cards, simply the, the fact that it's a card and it's going to be worth some number of points for him. All right, well, here is the theoretical I'm not going to call it broken, but card that we take umbrage with, which is each of the offering tiles, the pentagonal ones, are worth two points apiece. Normally, they have a base of one. So, there's that. Right, Shrey? Uh, hmm. Okay. Yellow, green, black. So I could advance on the burial track if I want. Well. We could get another artisan too. Oh, lordy. perfect world I would get red and blue but I don't see a way outside of this to be able to do that so I could spend those to get a red blue and a silver and then the red blue helps me get a green yellow I don't know if that but it does advance me up those tracks and essentially blocks that like I'm done with the Nile area. <clears throat> yeah, I think so. So forgot to move that. 
I think we will try this. I'm not saying it's the best idea, but we will try this. And the two silvers. So we could either go with that one or that one. And these are the exact colors that I want. So I think we will go with that and sacrifice the point. It's a silver, red, blue. Done. There. The trader puts a red out, which puts the lowest track, which is going to be the yellow track. Oops, sorry. Y'all didn't see that. So we put the red here. Yellow track will move up one there. And then he has black yellow. Uh, I'd rather the black go out, which means the yellow he would get an artisan. I think so. So he takes the highest point artisan. I feel like I'm making so many bad decisions because these are so many points for him, but we will see. Okay, now I think we stay on target. We go red and I said blue there. So that's going to be a yellow and green back. And up to on the red and blue tracks, I'll just go ahead and cap that one. And now we have a single track left that isn't. We'll see how that works out. And his fourth turn, blue comes out here, which get rid of the highest point and the number two. So the highest point is going to be that one goes away. And number two, I'm actually, I like that this churns through the market. It feels like a multiplayer game in that regard. Plus you get to power through cards. Uh, 10 points and then in the artisan, these are any color. So that's cool, but obviously it's three of the same color, but there's that. Uh, so reds, red cannot go out there. So that means both reds will go here. Stop that. All right, so this will be uh, up the lowest track, highest track, highest track. So technically it's like this. So lowest track would be black, highest track would be red, red is capped, so then it doesn't, correct? Let me double check. Leftmost, yeah, in case of a tie. So I would say it doesn't. So lowest will be black, done. Highest is red, but it can't because there. And if tied, it goes leftmost. And then if it can't do it, it just is ignored. And the highest is red again, ignored. So hey, that's cool. All right. All right. So I could do the burial chamber with those three to advance to there. That's eight points. I think that feels okay. Let's do it. Yellow, black, green. We'll go there. And then I think we pass on the next turn, but we'll see. He goes green. Green is advance one on the burial chamber. Okay. But I've already claimed this, so that's, that's moot for him. And then black and blue. Uh, let's see, blue out here, black would take those. And then the opposite, blue here is burial chamber and then black. I think I'd rather him put the black here. So he takes the topmost and then blue goes out there. So he takes those tiles. And then, is there anything terribly exciting that we want to do with these? I 
Basically, I could spend a silver for five points, right? For this. Spending three silver and then... Doesn't feel great. But a silver for five, that, mm. Thing is, I'm going to get a resource if I pass now. That feels better. And we get to go first next turn. I think so. I think we pass. Which, thank you. Yeah, okay. So green. And what happens if there's no tokens left on the spot designated? They take nothing. So they take nothing because nothing. That's good. And then blue and yellow. Yellow's full. So yellow has to go here. Get rid of the number one noble. And blue comes here. Well, that, that worked out really well. So the quote-unquote broken or hmm is out of the game. New Noble comes out, that's 12 points. And then these can be any color. That's not bad, okay. So that was his last turn. It's our turn, we advance. What are we going to want next turn to do? I could make a case for green or black. I could make a case for red. Green or black are essentially functionally the same for us. Red will be here. Green would be there. Red would, uh, I'm sorry, uh, black would be there. There's a black here. I actually, I think we take red. Done. And then he passes. All right, end of the round. So when we pass, we chose this because I already planned on taking the black. So black and two blue. We will clear these off. Rotate. I chose this one. That one's gone. Yellow, yellow, green. Yellow, yellow, green. That one's dead. Okay. We put two new ones out. We are the first player. And anything else that I'm forgetting? Two new jars. Oh, yeah, we need to refill that. Okay. So, two new ones. Really like the game when I tried it. Uh, Willem says, uh, at Essen way back, didn't get it as I thought it was too expensive. I was hoping to pick it up in the bargain bins this year. No such luck. But at least I can watch you play it. Well... Yeah, I, in hindsight, I, I wish I had a copy of this because I'm actually really enjoying the solo on this. This is a cool little uh, way to implement an AI, and it's very simple to do. Uh, so we are in the fourth round. He gets four. One, two, three, and then we have to shuffle those that have been used. That shuffled enough. I mean, does anybody remember how that is? No, me either. So there we go. All right. So we are the first player. This is where we're at. I was thinking of going black and red here and just completely finishing that, and that gives us two silver. Is there a reason we don't want to do that? I guess if we wanted these...
Now, I think we're just gonna go ahead and do that. So black and red here. So black or green, but whatever, red, done. That will go up that track and to silver. That's done. His turn. Black track. Uh, that is the offering in space number one. That is going to be that offering there. And then green and yellow. I could close that off for the round, uh, and the green would go out, and then he would score that god at the end of the game. If I do the yellow, he would take those. That's three points. That's worth more. Let's go ahead and put the yellow there. Put the green here, and he takes those. Okay. That's done. Okay. That's blue, red, yellow to go there. Blue is not a particularly helpful color this round. Maybe we pass early and try and make a big turn in the last round. I just don't feel like I have a ton of points coming. I'm going to try it. I feel like against my better judgment, but blue, uh, red, yellow. I don't know. I just don't feel good about it. Like last night I felt like I was, you know, churning and burning, but here a lot less so. So that is a blue. Step on the pyramid. There. And then blue and yellow. Do I care out here? Not really. So blue and yellow here is discarding stuff I'm actually okay I think I go there and discard those and block off all the yellows so that is the highest artisan and the number three so that one and the highest it, it's the same it doesn't matter they're both fives And a new noble. Noble says, uh, get to duplicate any other noble. And once per round, instead of getting what's on the canopic jar, you can choose any three basic resources. That's pretty cool. I mean, that's 12 points. And I mean, it'd be useful earlier in the game, less so now. So I have these left. I think I'm going to pass. This may be a terrible idea, but let's see. What do we want? Um, so it's definitely a red. Black will be here. Red will be here. Yellow I don't care about at all. Red, red, black. I think we go that way. Red, red, black. So that's the one we choose. Done. Okay. So his turn. That is red. So that will score that guide at the end of the game. And then green and black... Either can go out. Score that god. Or do we let him get, what is that, nine points? Hmm. 
That is worth seven points. Potentially nine if it gets it up to there. Uh, I think I think we'll do that, and then we'll place the black out here. Done. Our turn. We get a resource of our choice. So if we wanted one of these, I would want something I don't have. So green or yellow. I think green is more flexible because that's also here. Yellow less flexible because I don't care about that. The other question is, do I take red? Well, red and green are the same. So I guess a green, red, same. Six more, I have a dozen the other. Okay. His turn, final turn of the round for him. Black will go here. He gets that noble. Red and blue, either can go out there. So he gets noble number two. That one is six points and then two points for each one of these that's different. Okay, that one actually is kind of kind of tempting. And it opens up an extra space here, but I think that's probably going to be moot. I don't think that's going to be an issue. And then red and blue, what do we care about? Uh, that would give him two tiles. The red, that would give him up two tracks. So that would be up the green and yellow track. And I don't want to do that because that's a bunch of points. So I think we go blue there, which will get him these two tiles, and red will go out on the board. Done. We advance, we get a silver, and then it's back to him, he passes. We keep the first player marker, clear these off, and rotate. And then we have blue, red, yellow go out there. Blue, red, yellow. We don't put out canopic jars for the fifth round because it doesn't matter. He gets three of these bad boys. We refill those, and I think we're ready to rock and roll. So what are you all thinking so far? I think he's whooping me, but we'll see. I'm enjoying this quite a bit. Hmm. Burial chamber one for, and that's 11 points. Ooh, that's tempting. Okay, so it's our turn. What the hell do we want to do? I mean, I'm looking at this and I'm seeing we might be able to do here, 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 and here in a perfect world. In a per I'm not sure I'm going to be able to make that work because let's see. I, oh, and we need one more for the center. Sorry, I missed that. That is essentially a black, but I don't think that's important. So... This requires, so, 1, 4, 9, 12, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I think I'm one resource short. I got, so maybe we go one, 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 one. I think we might be able to do that. So let's start with this. Red, and I want those. Okay. Not saying it's gonna work, but we'll see. Yellow goes out, get rid of noble number two, which of course is the one I wanted to get, because 
of course. Uh, glory to Rome, traitor. So that one goes away. Damn it. Well, maybe that changes our plans. That's 12 points. I am displeased. All right. Black and blue. I think I'd prefer the black going out there. Blue means he scores that. Black, he gets that. I think I would rather him do that. Point-wise, we're running a risk, but that's okay. Black, he gets those, which are four points. That's one of his three turns. So I don't need to worry about this yet getting blocked off. I do need to worry about that. And the question is, is it worth doing, is it worth taking mystery meat? I don't know. The other option is I could come here to take that now. And I run the risk of that getting blocked off. Yeah, I'm okay with that. So I'll go a red here, which gives me the black and then something else. But that is a wash. It's three points, but that didn't help me get the extra resource. That's the problem. I could spend a silver for that, but that doesn't make sense. Is that worth it? I don't think that's worth it. So that was this here. Oh. So what could he do? He's not going to wipe any of the nobles, and none of those are terribly exciting for me. I mean, it doubles up a 12 point. I mean, it gives me a 12 pointer. But the bottom doesn't help me at all. I don't know. Mm. I think I'm going to stall for a turn. Green, black, and blue. I don't love it. It's 11 points, so I'm not complaining, but yeah, I don't love that at all, but I don't know what to do. And so his penultimate turn, red goes out here, his highest and lowest track. Lowest track is going to be yellow, highest track is red, and red is cap, so that doesn't, but yellow does move up there. And then black and blue. I don't want to put blue out there. So red, black's going to have to go out there, which means blue has to go here and going to score that. Say la vie. That didn't do anything for us, did it? Oh, by the way, hold on. I should have used that instead of one of the colors. Let me do that. So what colors were those? Black, green, which are the same, or blue. And I, I guess I'll keep the blue. Okay. I'm going to, okay. Blue, yellow, red, and two others. All right, peanut gallery. What do we do? 12 points, and the bottom it doesn't really do a lot for us. Yellow and red are interchangeable, really doesn't do a lot for us. Uh, that's going to be 
see that would be four. This is not an option because right now we would need four of those. That would be the third. That's not going to happen. We're not choosing this one. This gives us 12 points as well. So, and the bottom is... Moot? Uh, we might be able to get a canopic jar, but I don't know that we're going to be able to do anything with it. Um, yes, we will. I think we take this one. Yeah, I, I might find a way to do something with this for the canopic jar. So that's done and we will refill and we'll get to see what we could have chosen for mystery meat, which was zero points and that would have gotten us uh, five points and five, eight points. Good choice, us. Okay. Two resources gets me three resources which then might allow me to go here, over here. I think I might, this might work. Might, 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 might. We'll see how this goes. Okay, he's going to green. I'm sorry, green goes here. Uh, so each of those is now 10 points. Stop that, please. Red and black. Both can go out and neither do I terribly care about. Uh, I think I'd rather him block off black, which means red would go here. That would be nine points there. And that is seven points. Well, I guess we'll go with the seven pointer there and block that off. Okay, so now I think this works. That's a yellow and a green. Yellow and a green gets us a canopic jar. The colors don't matter. Why? Because we have this once per turn, says we can take any three. It doesn't matter what three we take. The important thing was we turn two resources into three. And why does that matter? To be able to go there. So now it's his turn. He passes. He's gonna go first. That got him three extra points, by the way. And then on our turn, we will go there and then three other resources to make it there for 16 points. And then it's his turn. He gets a resource of any color. And then we pass, and that's the end of the game. All right, let's see how we did. I have no idea. I feel like he smoked us, but we'll see. First things first are the gods here. So for the gods, for the AI, for the trader, he gets that one, which is Nubis, right? Yeah. So he gets that one for 10. This one for seven, so 17. No. So what one? Oh, wait, I'm wrong. This is the one he didn't get. I apologize. He got the other four. So six, 13, and eight is 21, and seven is 28. I have no idea how we did, uh, seeing as we have no cardboard in front of us. It's not going to be great, I'll tell you that. Um, so we can't score either of these because we don't have those. This one is eight points if we got to two steps and two nobles. We do, so that's gonna be eight. We don't have four nobles, so we can't score both those, so eight, so we can't score that one. Eight, we do have two artisans there. Eight and six is 14, not great. Okay, nobles, he's scoring 10 points per noble, three of them, that's 30 points.
And then my nobles. So here we go. Let's see. This is going to be, did I reach uh, at least level one on the Nile? I mean, yes. So that's going to be a total of 12. This one will duplicate that for 24, 25, 26. So, so far we've lost every category. I'm just, just saying. And now artisans, I believe he scores face value on artisans. Let me check. Yeah. Okay. So he's getting 6, 12, 14, and 11 is 25. We have uh, 7. Again, losing every category. I feel good on this one, though. He's getting 24 on the burial chamber. We're getting 60. Then on the tracks on these, 7 points up there for the... Uh, for the Nile area. So seven for the top, three for that one. So he's getting three, six, nine, and seven is 16, right? Nine and seven, 16. And I'm getting 35. Uh, one point a piece for every piece of cardboard. I mean, I would argue I was efficient, but one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. It's a zero. Uh, he got three for that. I got seven for that. All right. So the trader, let's see, uh, twenty-eight and thirty is fifty-eight. Fifty-eight. And 25 is 63, 83, eight, and 24, 83, 87, 107, and 3 is 110, and 24 is 134, and 16 is 150. Leader in the clubhouse. Yours truly, 14 and 26 is 40, and 60 is 100, and 35 is 135. And 14 is 149. Are you kidding me? Check my math. Okay. Are you kidding me? I would say that is the right level that I played, though, if that's right. 28, 30. 25, 24, 16, 24, and 3. 150 for him. And mine was pretty straightforward, but that's 40, 100, 142, 140. Yep, checks out. <laughs> that's awesome and terrible all at the same time. Um, so there you go. So the solo on this, let's talk about that. Uh, this is cool. Like this is really, and like I said, the order in which these are doesn't really matter, but the what one you randomly put out here, I guess ends up mattering. And there's so much random as far as how the, the actions that he's gonna take, you can't really plan for it, but you have some uh, ability to be able to dictate because once you do so, the bottom one happens, but then you choose what goes out there and what you want. That shit is just really clever. I mean, it's it's really well done and clean, right? It kind of follows the design philosophy of the game, or at least as I'm interpreting it from a standpoint of mechanically, it's pretty simple to, to go through and to do. You have a little cheat sheet that shows what the AI, uh, what the iconography is, but let's face it, like partway through the game, I was able to kind of do away with that for the most part, except for ties and stuff like that. But you just print that out or you have it open in the rule book and boom, done. It's clean, it's smooth, it's easy to run. Uh, yeah, I think... I, I would give it high marks. I really enjoyed the multiplayer. I really enjoyed the solo.
I mean, y'all saw it right there. Uh, let's see, Peter. Uh, so could you have picked a last artisan with the three for three and gotten the points you needed? I don't think so because that was 16 points that I got for the last step on the uh, burial chamber here. And nothing I was going to do is going to get me 16 points. So no. Um, and if I had tied, uh, let's see. In case of a tie, they win. So I technically lost by two points because I lost by a point. But if tied, they win. So, but yeah, that was that was pretty great. Uh, ah, yeah, if you're a solo player, I think there's there's enough game here. Um, if you're looking for this type of solo, which easy to run AI, competitive, use it's scalable, right? Uh, and there's a lot of replayability. Yeah, I'd say for the solo alone, this is this is pretty solid. Availability is a question because it's not it hasn't been printed in English. Um, hopefully, a U.S. publisher is going to pick this up because I think there I think there's a lot of good game here. There's the question about the the one noble card in the turn order that we addressed in last night's stream. So if you're interested, go check that out. But honestly, that could be either put in as variants, uh, developed a l maybe a step further on that one card, and whether or not to offer the turn order as a rule change, a variant, or no, it's better the way it is. So to be determined on that. But all things said, really good game. Really enjoyed that. So hopefully, hopefully you all did as well. And yeah, oh God, yes. Thank you, Todd. Score pad sideways, change this to vertical. You you add vertically, you don't add horizontal. Change that to that. Simple, but yeah. How did somebody look at that nut? Mm. Thank you for irritating me. Reminding me of that irritation, I should say, Todd. But yeah, uh, agreed. Yeah, that was just, just print it that way. Anyway, that's it. That's Farron. So well done. Uh, designers, developers, publishers. Somebody in the U.S. pick this up, please. I think uh, I think this will sell. I think there's a market for this. It's it's good multiplayer. It's good with heavier gamer, like strat more, more less casual gamers, but also good for casual gamers. Like we mentioned last night, if you were to play this at like a library night or a meetup.com type, you know, game night, I think this is light enough in the mechanisms are simple enough and these feel familiar enough that most anybody could play this, I think, and pick it up and enjoy it. Is there a theme? No, there's a setting, but again, if you're playing this type of game, to me, it's it's more about the mechanism. So I think I think there's a lot of good stuff here and not a lot of negatives on that. So there, there you go. That is Farron. Thanks everybody who took some time out of their day to join me live. Certainly appreciate it. Made it a lot more enjoyable and hopefully it was entertaining and enjoyable for y'all. And if you found value in this and you think, uh, you think either this was good to turn you on to a game that maybe you haven't heard about or were on the fence about or possibly saved you money and turned you off on the game that you might have otherwise had been interested in, then consider supporting the show. Uh, you can do it a number of ways. Subscribe, Give it a thumb. All of those things help the channel. Absolutely. Uh, a bigger step, if you wish to do so, is patreon.com forward slash HCHQ. It helps us keep the lights on and continue to improve the show. So I certainly would appreciate it a lot. So consider doing that if you were so inclined. That's it for the week. We have game day. We're going to be doing some uh, gaming off camera tomorrow. And then... Uh, uh, chilling, uh, doing other stuff on Sunday, and then hitting it pretty hard next week. So if you're at Essen, have fun. I, I'm, I, I miss being there. If you're not, uh, see you all next week. All right? Y'all have a great rest of your day. Enjoy some sunshine if you have it, or a nice walk outside if the weather is so, well, that's what I'm going to go do. Do a little Pokemon Go while we're out there. I'll see you all later. Have a great rest of your weekend. All right, y'all? Take care. Bye. One point. Ah! But at least I gauge the right level, right? Like, I'm curious how brutal it would be if you flip the other two. Youch! Because 149 is pretty good score, I think. So, yeah. Good stuff.